A long time ago, many people followed the Buddha Dipankara into ordination. They loved to hear his sermons, and many were awakened to the bliss of the Dhamma. The Buddha also taught lay people to live righteously according to the Dhamma, and they delighted in his teachings. The Buddha Dipankara often traveled long distances to spread the Dhamma and liberate people far and wide. News of his journey often preceded him, and lay people routinely waited along the way for him to pass by in order to pay their respects. In a frontier town near the area the Buddha Dipankara was to pass, there was a young girl named Sumita. When she observed a commotion in her town, she asked her servant, What's going on down there? The servant responded, There is a Buddha who will pass by our town. Overtaken by joy and excitement, Sumita rushed to her father. She begged and pleaded for permission to go and witness a Buddha with her own eyes. Her father was worried for her safety, but when Sumita's servant said she would accompany his daughter, Sumita's father gave his permission. Along the path that the Buddha Dipankara would pass, Many segments of road were in disrepair and overgrown with brush and weeds. The townsfolk began clearing and cleaning the path as a physical offering to the Buddha. Sumita immediately joined in and began to work to clear the road. At that same moment, a hermit named Sumita, who was training his mental absorptions, was flying by. He saw a commotion down below and became curious. He descended and asked the people what they were doing. They told him, Sir, a Buddha is known to come by this path. We are clearing it for him so that the Lord Buddha can walk more easily. When Sumetha heard the word Buddha, he felt a level of bliss and excitement he had never felt before. He said, This is such a wonderful thing that you endeavor. I request that you allow me to help you clear the road for the Buddha to pass. They pointed to an especially muddy and overgrown part of the path and left it to the hermit to clear. They assumed that with his supernormal abilities, he would be able to clear it with ease. However, Sumetha reflected that in order to gain the maximum merit, he would have to use his natural abilities rather than his supernormal ones. He got down on his hands and knees and began clearing the brush with vigor. Sumetha could not believe her eyes. Here she was, watching a holy man, an ascetic, who was just flying in the air, on his hands and knees in the brush and mud, clearing the path. She could feel joy and excitement radiating from his person. He did not hesitate for a moment to use his robes as tools to transfer dirt or carry mud. He was so focused on his task that he did not mind getting dirty. Sumita was filled with respect and admiration for Sumita's demeanor and decided that she would help him clear his part of the road. Without any concern for beauty, cleanliness, or comfort, Sumita used everything at her disposal to help clear the road. She worked side by side with Sumita. As he worked harder, so did Sumita. Suddenly, the townsfolk began to chant, Satu, Satu, Satu. The Lord Buddha Dipankara had arrived. The lay people began to line up on both sides of the road and marvel at the sight of the Buddha. 
Seeing a Buddha is beyond lucky. It is a blessing beyond words, and the townsfolk reveled in his aura and majesty. They were brought to tears of bliss just being in his presence. Sumita and Sumita both realized that their part of the path would not be cleared in time for the Lord Buddha to pass. Sumita's servant pulled her aside to find a seat to watch and pay the respects as the Buddha passed by. Sumita was concerned about what Sumita would do with the rest of the uncleared path. As Sumita watched, the Buddha approached the muddy, uncleared part of the path. Sumita, focused and serene, took off his robes and laid them over the muddy section. He then made a request of the Lord Buddha in front of all who were gathered. Enlightened one, glorious one, precious one, I humbly request that you and all of your monks use my hair, my head, my body as a bridge to cross the muddy patch. Please, sir, I could not bear to see your feet and robes dirtied. And with this merit, combined with all the merit I have ever created, may I one day become a Lord Buddha like you, and be a bridge for all suffering beings of this world. May I lead them away from suffering and rebirth, and instead lead them towards freedom from suffering and Nibbana. Satu, may this please come true. The Buddha, using his divine eye, looked far off into the future and smiled. He explained that in about four eons and a hundred thousand incalculable periods, this very ascetic would be reborn over and over as the Podisat, until he was finally reborn as Prince Siddhartha. After growing to a certain age, marrying, and having a child, he would leave the palace for a life of renunciation. After six years of striving, he would become the Buddha Gotama and lead countless beings away from rebirth and towards Nibbana. Hearing the Buddha's prophecy, the ascetic was overwhelmed with emotion. He knew that if the Buddha said it, it would certainly come true. Any amount of pain, any amount of striving, any amount of effort would be worth becoming a Buddha and saving countless beings. He was ready. Witnessing this, Sumita saw an opportunity and immediately rushed to a nearby pond. She waded into the water and picked nine of the most beautiful lotus flowers. When she got back, she sat down and made her aspiration to the Lord Buddha. My Lord, with the merit I have gained from physical work of clearing the path with these lotus flowers, and with all previous merit I have accumulated in all my rebirths, I dedicate myself to this aspiration. May I be reborn every life as the wife of this ascetic. I wish to accompany him on his journey to becoming a Buddha. I am ready and willing to make any and all sacrifices necessary to help him achieve his goal. I want this with all of my heart, with all of my being. May my aspiration come true. Sumeta, looking up, said, Sister, I applaud your good intentions. I applaud you for your hard work and sacrifice. However, I do not know you, nor do I want a wife in this life or the next. I do not accept your request. Please take your words back. 
Please, Lord Buddha, there is nothing that I want more. Please make my wish come true. Sister, please wish for something else. See here, ascetic. The path of a Buddha is a long and challenging road. You will encounter many hardships and have to make many sacrifices. Your will and fortitude will be challenged every life. You will have to overcome unimaginable obstacles from the outside and from within. Having someone willing to assist you on the path is not a burden, but rather a blessing. Do not be so quick to reject her. Cultivating dana bara me by giving away your wife is part of the path to Buddhahood, as it was for me. After listening to the Buddha's advice, the ascetic accepted Sumita's request. Both Sumita and Sumeta rejoiced. The Buddha then led his procession of monks to carefully cross the muddy section by using Sumeta's body as a bridge. Each monk walked carefully with their hearts filled with sympathetic joy for the ascetic's aspiration. The ascetic's heart was so filled with excitement and joy that he barely felt physical pain. As Sumita looked on, she grew more and more impressed with Sumita's fortitude and endurance. She marveled at the strength of his will. Sumeta quietly endured through the entire ordeal. His mind was focused and filled with excitement. Sumita, seeing the massive physical toll it was taking on Sumeta, began to worry for him. However, she realized that in order to trade for a grand aspiration, one must make an equally grand sacrifice. After the company of monks crossed, Sumeta got up and dusted himself off. He reflected on his aspiration and felt a wave of energy overtake him as all the dewas and spirits rejoiced in his accomplishment and future attainment. After some time, Sumeta flew into the air and lived the rest of his life striving to fill the requirement needed to become a Buddha by maximizing all of his paramitas, his virtues. What do you think the moral of this story is? We hope you enjoyed the video. Click like if you did, and click subscribe if you want to see our uploads.